Oh, welcome back, y'all. AK, let's talk about the first story of the day. I think this one is the one that really rocked the rugby world hardest, and that is Mr. Lee Re Lewis Rees Zamet is now going to the NFL. Oh, my God, yo, what's up? Yo, okay, so I'm not going to lie. I had no idea who this guy was prior to all this. But learning more about him, I, it looks like one of those where it hits from the generation, and I think it hurts uh, with the addition of, like, Owen Farrell and Antoine Dupont not being a part of the Six Nations, not playing for their uh, national team, albeit for their respective reasons. You know, Dupont wants to do the Olympics, so he's getting ready for that one. Uh, and obviously, Owen Farrell is taking a mental health break because he's tired of y'all's online hate destroying him. But, but Lewis Rezamit, this guy, this guy's different. This guy's different. He said, "I want to follow in the steps of a very few." other rugby elites who have tried their hand at NFL. I think one part of it is obviously because money. I mean, you know, you, the pain is just hands down better. But I, I think the other part is also to see these new challenges. Um, now, if you guys don't know, he actually entered into the program through what is called the International Player Pathway. It is something that's been going on for maybe about uh, almost 10 years now, maybe about five, six years now, um, where the NFL has been trying to find different talents and turn them on. Uh, actually, you, uh, World Rugby's former chairman, um, uh, what was his name? Um, was it Bill Beaumont? Not Bill Beaumont. Um, former chairman Brett Gosper actually moved from being the CEO of World Rugby to working as the head of Europe and Asia Pacific um, scouting for the national for the NFL, simply because he wanted to continue to try and change more players over. So they created this program, and it looked like Lewis had been trying out, and he brought a statement out. He dropped it on Twitter, on X, if you may, um, where he was like, I would like to take this opportunity to announce a significant career decision that I have taken after careful consideration. In a move that I am extremely excited about, I can confirm that I will be joining the NFL's International Player Pathway Program, IPP, in pursuit of earning a spot on an NFL roster in the United States for 2024. All right. So, like, this one, again, it rocked the, rocked the, the, the rugby world. So, why? Number one, this kid has been playing for Gloucester. And has been obviously has been a pinnacle for Wales. He actually started playing for Wales during the pandemic in 2020. Uh, this guy's a young talent. This guy's a speedy winger. Uh, apparently, as they say, that he's got a breakaway speed similar to NFL wide receiver Tyreek Hill. I think somebody made a comparison. They're like, uh, Zamet, Reese Zamet has been calculated at running a 24.2 miles per hour. And Tyreek Hill was somewhere on 22 point something miles per hour. Now, honestly, I I, I think there's a little bit mislead, you know, uh, one pads on for Tyreek Hill and two, you know, it's it's understanding your your surroundings and, and the breakaway. That being said, this kid's fast. It's fast. A fast Welshman. There's not a lot of them. So I can also understand why there, there is a loss. There's a concern for that. Uh, number two, uh, you know, he has been a pinnacle for the Welsh rugby team uh, over the course of the last uh, couple Six Nations. So losing him in this Six Nations actually even caught the head coach, Gatland, off, off kilter about uh, his placement. So that throws it off. So like I said it earlier, Three major players not returning for the Six Nations this year. It's not something that it's not just an uncommon. It's basically unheard of, especially if you're a captain like Dupont and subsequently Owen Farrell. Now, this is all well and interesting, and but he's obviously not the first person to have gone into the league themselves, right? And for me, you know, I'm I'm always a little mixed. I remember. And we're gonna. I want to talk a little bit about some of the players that have gone through, but uh, when it comes to it, it's like 
what is it that we're trying to do in rugby? Why is this such an opportunity? On one hand, some people go, hey, this is a positive. It means that rugby can be used as developmental for uh, football. Hit or miss, because obviously there hasn't been a plethora of successful rugby players that have crossed over. On the other hand, it's also a loss because it also speaks to the volume of where rugby is financially and subsequently what you're going to be dealing with in terms of like the level of turnover and generational shift they're going to have, especially now that the NFL is pushing more and more into Europe. You know, next year they got Berlin, they got Madrid, they got, uh, is it Madrid or they got, yeah, somewhere in Spain. Barcelona. They got Barcelona, of course, London as per usual. So you you got an entrance happening there, and these can be a clash. The other thing is, and I think uh, was said really well on, on Twitter, which was on X, I got to keep saying it, written by Paul Williams, big time rugby writer. And he was like, is the NFL the pinnacle of athletic ability in the whole sports world? And he's like, I rarely watch it, but they seem to be the best of the best, broadly speaking. And I think that also says another thing where it's like, where is it that rugby competes? So why does this impact rugby in a negative or positive way? But one, it, uh, another way is, you know, how are we going to be helping the sport? Like we got these guys going in, but do they grow anything back into the sport? Financially, they get set. And I think that's really significant. That's really significant. But how does that grow in, in the sport of rugby itself? Um, and whenever we talk about the pinnacle of athletics, so I think with the NFL, I wrote this on face on uh, X as well as a response. And I said, Hey, look, when it comes to the mixture of, uh, speed, fast twitch, speed, power, uh, the size variation and, uh, the number of people available, uh, add that with the financial compensation with it. I think hands down it's top. It's probably the the top league that you can go to uh, of any sport with the most dense amount of athletic capability. When it comes to it, in general, obviously, there's other sports like the Cathlong, there's MMA, you know, there is like the 800, there's all these, let's say, basically Olympic sports that can do the same thing, but they just don't have the financial restitution to be able to handle it. Even rugby could be perceived in that. But... I'm here going like, yo, if we're, as rugby, not able to attract people to go up into it, we're going to find ourselves in this, once again, a generational gap. And look, I I don't think it's a bad thing, but I don't think it's great. Now, that being said, what can we say about the success rate? I think the one person that was most familiar to a lot of people that went from rugby to uh, NFL for but a moment in 2015, and this was rugby league, not rugby union, was Jared Hain. Now, I don't want to talk too much about him because he's a dirty, rotten rapist, so F him forever. But, uh, you know, he saw a little stint as a punt returner for the preseason. Uh, and so that that kind of sparked a little bit. But there's been a lot that I've gone through. So let's let's go down the list a little bit right here, all right? Number one, we got Gary Anderson. Now, if you don't know who Gary Anderson, Gary Anderson is – Easily the best kicker in NFL history. He was a saffer who played rugby in South Africa and came to the U.S. to be able to came to the U.S. and started playing NFL football uh, there. He played for the Vikings and everybody and their mama. But this man was a is a Hall of Famer and a beast. All right, so that's that's one. So we've seen a success there as a kicker. Stuart Bradley. Stuart Bradley was a linebacker for the uh, Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, he was a U.S. rugby player, though. All right. He played for Highland Rugby. And if you don't know who Highland Rugby is, uh, if you go watch um, um, uh, uh, Forever Rugby, uh, the movie, um, that is where uh, that's the team that that movie is based off of. Now, how your feelings on that movie is, that's neither here nor there. I don't care. But. That's what that basin, Stuart Bradley, and he had a great career, seven-year career, you know, did his thing, no complaints going over there, all right? You had a guy, David Dixon. Now, David Dixon played in New Zealand. 
He didn't start playing football until he got to college in Arizona State, ended up playing 11 years for as an NFL guard, primarily for the Minnesota Vikings. We got something over there, all right? Cool. Uh, and now let's talk to about people that have had a, a better connection with professional rugby and then transition to football. We got Alex Gray. Alex Gray was a center and a number eight. He played for Newcastle and the formerly known as London Iris, now defunct, as well as played for England Sevens. Uh, he made his way over to the NFL path, uh, NFL using the IPP, same one that uh, Lewis, is, Lewis uh, Zamet, Reece Zamet is using. Uh, he made it to the Atlanta Falcons practice squad. No idea where he is right now, but he at least showed a little bit of success, of course, for a team that I hate with all my passion. So kind of F him forever, too. <laughs> Uh, and then you got Christian Scotland Williamson, uh, who played for Worcester from 2014 to 2017. He was a second rower. Uh, he actually made it again through the IPP program into the Pittsburgh Steelers practice squad. So not onto the starting squad. He's not dressing up for games typically, but if they did anything, boom, there he is. He's, he's going to be uh part of the thing. Uh, my boy Caleb talking. About, I, I know I'm gonna get to him, Caleb. No worries. I'm gonna get to him. Don't 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 even worry about that. Um, and uh, we got so him wasn't successful, but you know he made it on there. And then you got someone like Christian Wade. Christian Wade looked like Reggie Bush on his highlights. I don't know if you guys remember those good Christian Wade. Um, Good Christian Wade play uh, 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 highlights. Hold on. Let me see if I can pull a Christian Wade highlight up here. Uh, yeah, let me, let me let me let me bring us over. Let me bring us over here. So this is Christian Wade. This was he ended up going to the Buffalo Bills, but he was a beast with England. Like dude was just juking on everybody. Christian this is what he was in the NFL. The back and he gets the carry here for the Bills. And look at Wade go. All the way from England to the house. Touchdown. Oh, let me take that back again because I took it off. All the, the way from England to the house. Touchdown, Buffalo. Unbelievable. And look at the Bills' sideline. They are going crazy for their friend from England. Christian. So Christian Wade was one. Now, he ended up getting, I think, cut by the Bills. Uh, I think he's trying to make his push into, you know, football and still do it because he never went back to England. He never went back to playing. I think he even wrote somewhere where he was like, yo, I got paid 400 grand just to be able to leave rugby to go play. And he I don't think he even made it out of preseason as uh, on the roster also looks like he i guess he bounced around i didn't research him that much but <laughs> he he was one that that did it and then i think the most famous i think the i think arguably might be the most successful rugby crossover uh into the football is jordan Maialata. he is a tackle for the philadelphia eagles he made it to a super bowl last year like this dude is a beast he's only a couple years in probably one of the best tackles uh uh in rugby there's guys that block if you know you're coming from overseas and and talking this um he is fantastic he jumped from rugby league to to the nfl so not rugby union but still within that guys it's like yo he's 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 done damage like he can do it so i think a lot has been found when it comes to skill when it comes to skill players i don't know if there's really much uh has been much success in terms of um, an out, a successful outcome from skill players, because I think there's one, the lack of knowledge, two, um, the inability to uh, fully traverse going with pads and understanding playbooks and understanding all the, the nuances that come with playing, despite what people say. But I think we've seen a lot of success when it comes to uh, linemen and defensive linemen, um, they seem to be where the power of rugby transitioning over to football has been the best. I think there's been others. Paul Lasik. We obviously know Nate Ebner out of the U.S. Uh, Hayden Smith, who was became a tight end and 
played for like a season. He was with Premiership. Like there's been some guys, but again, they've been very short run success. The longest run seems to be at, in the trenches, in the line, which means it's your back rowers and your props that probably have been able to have the best crossover. Uh, so I, I don't know. This one, I, 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 I don't know if this is going to be a big deal. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Let me know what you guys are feeling like. Do you think that, you know, Lewis is going to have a chance? Like, do you think Lewis is going to be able to go do some damage? I, I don't know. But I, I feel like, I don't know. He's, he's, it's probably not going to go well. Probably make a practice squad, but 22 years old, entering in, never played outside of some plays here and there for the uh, for the um, transition funnel. I, I wouldn't have that much expectation for him going through.